and here is where the plot gets lost somewhere between here and the bank where green clouds the minds of the logical ones while the green carries its financial security it lacks in character substance when it was right to sing his glory everyone and i mean everyone jumped at the chance and now when it's out to even mention and now it's so good for him, from him every writer now too takes that full glory from ex-loyal fans to people who by their ass won't let him be seen as a hero I formulated this simple theory that everyone who now writes and swears hell on Iverson's career finally found the perfect opportunity to do so. They waited and waited, hid behind their bias, stereotypes, and racism. Just waiting. Now they finally found a crack in Iverson's defense. They couldn't disparage his tats and cornrows and thug life because it would have seemed like an argument filled with bias from the stereotypes. But now, now they could get him for something that a white player could do and get away with and saying he'll retire long before he steps foot at the edge of the bench. And this is what I have to say. You know, that's the one of our country's biggest demises when it comes to sports figures, movie stars, and the media. You know, it always seems to be okay to kick someone when they're down. You know, Michael Vick, Allen Iverson, you know, and the list goes on and on and on of different stars and athletes who have made a simple natural human reaction and human mistake you know but it's always been our almost duty to just kick them bash them beat them make them seem unhuman because of some little mistake that they did that anyone else that any of us could have could make you know um, that is something that I've always found almost appalling about the United States, you know. We seem to always just go with the stereotypes, believe them, when we don't even know who these athletes are, who these movie stars are, who these stars are. We don't get to know them, you know, we never will, you know. But we have to recognize that they're human, you know. And instead of believing the stereotypes, you know, we seem to just not want to. You know, get a get a chance to spend time with someone of the opposite race. Get to know them, you know, and you realize that there's more to them and the stereotypes. That's the same thing that could be said about Iverson, you know. But our country just can't seem to get that. The media can't get that through their tiny heads, you know. And another thing is, for some reason, it's always we need someone to blame when we can't blame ourselves for stuff like this, you know. You know, we sit there and we think, oh, it's Iverson, it's Iverson, 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 him, 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 you know, when we refuse to look at the monster that we created, you know, we made Iverson, you know, and now he's done, he's down, and let's kick him while we're at it, you know, and that goes into the simple fact that wherever the money goes, wherever there's green pastures, you know, we'll go with it, we'll throw out all loyalties, all all bonds that we had with something just chase that elusive money that we feel is gonna make us happy you know that's what the media does you know that's the one thing with Iverson he's always been very very loyal as a fan I mean as a player and as a human being you know and that's the thing about the media they turn on players they turn on teams like that you know they'll support one player here for this year and then the next year they're down kicking them you know just to chase that money you know And that's the one thing that I feel, you know, you stick with Allen Iverson through the thick and thin, you know, while he's doing good, you know, and while he's been, and when he's doing bad, you know. And that's the one thing, you know, that I've formulated recently is, unlike today's experts, I learned to love every player for what he's brought to the league instead of hating on him, you know. Kobe is special. There is something fierce in the way he is you know as an athlete that makes him so goddamn great at playing basketball same could be said about LeBron same could be said about Carmelo and Dwayne Wade and Chris Paul and Darren Williams name any player in the NBA there's something about him that got him to that to be in the NBA you know and you just can't go hating on him because 
you don't like his attitude, you know. And that's why, you know, I love watching anybody play, you know. I could watch the Bobcats go at it with the Timberwolves and still be, you know, awed at how great these athletes are, you know. So now moving on, using the kill killer theme again. I never did get along with everybody else. I've been trying hard to do a tribe, but you know I could stay here all night. Lieutenant to Iverson. He does have his faults. You know, he's not perfect. I'll admit that, you know. Late night, 3 a.m., 8 a.m., partying it up, going to clubs, getting his bodyguard in trouble, getting sued by his bodyguard, by clubs, whatever. You know, I, it's not right. You shouldn't be doing that when you're an athlete. You know, even though your body could do it, you know. He did set the bad example for the for Mallow and the Nuggets who tried following him, you know. That's the one thing, one thing about it, you know. Another thing, he was never a raw rock kind of leader, you know. He never got into it. You know, into a player's ear and telling him, "Yeah, you gotta do this. Let's go shape up." You know, like Jordan would do. You know, he would rather much just lead by example. You know, go out there, bust his ass off for 48 minutes instead of trying to motivate his teammates. You know, and that's the one thing that Iverson has, and partly, like you know, that's his mo. No player has ever, no, none of his teammates have ever question his ability on the court you know and how hard he works you know they've always thought he was a great teammate you know and I think that might be true for all his teammates except with the exception of maybe Jerry Stackhouse who just you know crew thick and his little gang with uh, I mean Iverson's crew thick and Jerry Stackhouse little gang you know they went at it probably one chased the other out of Philadelphia you know but you know and another thing about him he's not the greatest defender out there you know he's got he's a blessed with athleticism, long arms, and the ability to play the passing lane to get those steals. But straight up, you ask him to guard someone, he probably wouldn't be able to shut him down, no. Not the greatest defender out there, you know. And another thing about Iverson that maybe led to him overreacting and saying, I don't want to come off the bench, it's pride, you know. It's one of the biggest human reactions and emotions that we have that we seem to struggle the most with and to let it go, you know. We can't swallow our pride as humans. It's just not in our nature, you know. I was superstar A, you know. I'm not gonna be coming off the bench even though my back's busted and I can't go 100%, you know. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna tell people about it. I'll retire, you know. That's what Iverson said, you know. And, that's another thing about Arison, you know. So he's not exactly perfect, you know. But we need to learn how to find perfection in the flaws of someone, you know. As humans, as basketball fans, you know. His pros, again, relating to the killer song. On the field, I remember you were incredible. Hey, shut up. On the match with the boys, you think you're alone. With the pain that you drained from love, perfectly exist exemplifying Iverson, you know, the pain that he drained from love, love for basketball, you know, here's a guy, 5'11", you know, 60 generously, you know, 165, so, 165 pounds soaking wet, you know, who shot 42% from the field, you know, now, granted, that's not exactly 50%, you know, but who, you know, no one has been able to take it to the hole with such ferocity as Allen Iverson has for 13 years. Again, seven footers, you know. There is times when they're gonna get a piece of it and they're gonna block him, you know. That is the reason he shot so he sh shot this percentage is so low, you know. It's not because he doesn't have the ability to shoot the ball and because he can't do it, you know. It's, he's been so resilient at going to the hill to the hole that he gets blocked you know people pick up on it he's shorter than everyone else you know that's one thing I find you know that's just probably been amazing you know another thing another pro about Island Iverson he's probably the most loyal person in the NBA right now you know someone else out there as loyal as him you know but people seem to hate him for it you know and he's poured his heart out onto the court every single time, always 100%. And, you know, he's talented, very talented, probably one of the greatest basketball players of his generation, you know. And 
he's that's just you know basically Allen Iverson 